Well, the reason that mTOR is considered so important is because we have a lot of information now that it seems to be very connected to how the aging process works, and longevity is a universal human desire, I think. Uh, I don't really have to argue for that point. So what is mTOR? mTOR stands for mammalian, although uh, sometimes now we call it mechanistic, target of rapamycin. So I'm going to talk about where that name came from, why we call it that, and what that means. So it all started in Easter Island. The, in the native tongue there, it's called Rapa Nui. And in the 60s, there was a Canadian expedition to take soil and plant samples to study them. They found that there was this very potent antifungal. And so uh, Rapa means from Rapa Nui. And Myces is the word for mushroom or fungus. And side is a killer. So uh, Rapa Mycin means the antifungal from Rapa Nui. That's all there is to that. But enthusiasm, enthusiasm started to wane when we discovered that it not only was it a potent antifungal, but a potent immunosuppressant. And most or many cases where we want an antifungal, you don't actually want to be suppressing the immune system, although that did start to get used uh, fruitfully for kidney transplants later. Not only is it a potent antifungal and a potent immune suppressant, but it's also a potent growth suppressant. The way that we found out about mTOR itself was that we took rapamycin and killed some yeast with it, and, no, and took the, the yeast that survived and said, what's wrong with them that rapamycin didn't kill them? Uh, this is actually Michael Hall, one of the primary investigators who found out about this, giving, giving a talk about it. And uh, he told us that the, the yeast that survived all had genetic mutations in a particular part of the gene, uh, which they just didn't have a name yet, so they called it the target of rapamycin, which is TOR. So that's all that name means. And then um, the human, uh, the mammalian analog for the yeast is where the M comes from. So there was a point where we didn't know whether the growth suppression had to do with the size of the cells or the number of cells. It turns out it's both, but um, the size part was found out in a really interesting way. It turns out that fruit flies, their wings are actually only one cell wide. And so you could actually count them. And when they found out that you could make a smaller fruit fly by suppressing TOR, uh, the, then they could compare and find out that it's actually the same number of cells, just smaller. But things got really exciting when we found out that this was actually involved in aging as well. And that's when TOR and mTOR studies really started taking off. So what does it mean that it controls aging? Well, you can think of mTOR as an on-off switch. And uh, the thing that it's turning on or off has to do with the phases of metabolism. Uh, there are basically two phases. And there are many different names for these phases, depending on what your specific interest is. But catabolic and anabolic are pretty good names for them. So there's a phase where you're breaking things down. And then there's a phase where you're building things up. I like to call it the energy and the matter phase because in the catabolic part, you're actually taking your own structure and stores and you're turning matter into energy. And when you're building things up, you're using that energy and materials to build yourself more. mTOR is, the, is activated in the build phase. So if you want to ask, how do you inhibit mTOR, it's really the same question as how do you activate the energy phase. And there are many ways that you can activate the energy phase. You can do this by fasting or caloric restriction. You can do it with glucose restriction or protein restriction. And there's an important detail about that, that you can do either. It doesn't have to be both. And that seems to be where a lot of the confusion is. You can do it through exercise. You can also do it through things that taste bitter, which is almost always an indication that there are toxins, because toxins and other forms of oxidative stress put you into the energy mode. All of this comes back to the theme that anything that creates an energetic demand or a poor nutritional environment will put you into the energy phase.